The first time I had a gun pointed to my head, I was four years old. I was walking to the park with my mom in Tehran when the Islamic Republic's morality police pulled up alongside us. While their job was to monitor our hem lengths and our hair covering, their real job was abusing their power to deny women our rights and agency through deliberate acts of intimidation, dehumanization, and outright terror. I've never, ever forgotten the evil I saw in their eyes that morning. Even as a little girl, I knew a real-life monster when I saw one. Today, the Islamic Republic of Iran that forced me and my family out of our homeland remains as oppressive as ever. And it is the same regime that funds the terrorist group Hamas. On the morning of October 7th, Hamas brutalized, bound, burned, murdered, beheaded, and sexually assaulted young girls and women in Israel. They raped young girls at a music festival and threw their dead, naked bodies into piles on top of each other. They raped women and teenage girls with such force and mutilation that medical examiners found them with shattered pelvises and missing organs. They rape the dead bodies of women. They drag women through the streets and paraded them as their conquests to cheering crowds. Rape was a premeditated, orchestrated, deliberate tactic of war. Monsters. As a feminist and activist, I have stood shoulder to shoulder with women my entire adult life. Women who look like me, and women who don't. Together, we were the first to sign Me Too. We marched at the original women's marches. We advocated for the safe return of the girls kidnapped by Boko Haram. We joined the calls to end Asian hate and Islamophobia. We, can't, we supported Black Lives Matter. We campaigned for LGBTQ rights. We spent months protesting for women like freedom. We flew to the US-Mexico border to demand the reunification of families. We fought to protect our democracy. But then, on October 7th, I suddenly found myself completely alone. The champions I had stood next to so many times through so many injustices just disappeared. I was heartbroken and abandoned. Peers, friends, universities, and fellow leaders who still remain silent. You have made the deliberate choice to look the other way. You saw the videos, you saw the photos, many recorded and live streamed by the terrorists themselves on our feeds. You know exactly what happened to these girls and yet you turned away. You ignored our pleas to bring the hostages home. You didn't participate in our campaigns. You didn't hold signs. You didn't march. You didn't wear the t-shirts. You didn't sign the letters. When our women's mouths were bound and gagged, you chose not to be their voice. UN Women, it took you 50 days to condemn this gender-based violence and another seven to utter a single word about the terrorists that perpetrated them. When we commit to speaking out for women and girls, that means all women and girls. When we said believe women, we meant all women. the very clear and obvious violation of just these innocent women and girls, or worse, when you twist propaganda to dare justify it, then you are politicizing their pain. You are denying their stories. You are stating that their rights are undeserving and that their suffering is unworthy of your protection, and you are complicit in emboldening their perpetrators who must be held to account. does not require you to just pick a team and ignore the brutal contours of the real world. 
moral leadership does require you to see these women and all women. It is not your job to choose sides between them. It is your job to stand on their side. Now, the United Nations has a very long history of singling out the state of Israel, but I am not here to justify the need for a Jewish homeland or defend its right, our right, to exist. Because this, today, these brave people before you, this is about the women and the girls. And for their sake, it is time that the United Nations opens its eyes and does its job. It is time that my fellow leaders It is time that my fellow leaders, activists, and communities that have still remained silent open their hearts. You must not turn away from women who have been raped and massacred in the most horrific fashion simply because you dislike their government. Why is it that you cannot summon up your compassion for them? Why is it that you cannot find your voice to speak up for them? What is it about these women and girls that makes them so unworthy of your otherwise limitless capacity for outrage, solidarity, and justice? Once again, I'm afraid the reason is quite simple. Because they're Jews. If that, if that is not the case, then now is the time to prove it. Join us. Speak up. Condemn the barbaric violence by Hamas against women and girls. I need you. We need you. These women and girls need you. As a child standing outside the park, I remember looking straight into the evil eyes of those monsters. I was terrified. I knew those men would get away with anything they did that morning. I knew I'd have to remain silent. But I don't anymore. And neither do you. Please. Please hold these monsters accountable denounce these war crimes, and always believe 